The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. Somebody sent me a mail and I think it's one of us asking some questions from some scriptures. First Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Again, descending from the material, I mean the immaterial to material with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. This scripture is the resurrection from the dead. Mortality will wear immortality. It's not a change of location. It is resurrection. And then it talks about, you know, they who are alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The word air is not in the sky. The word air is pneuma. Pneuma means to meet the Lord in the spirit. Those that are dead will rise to meet the Lord in the spirit. Why will they rise? So they can wear their immaterial body. But those of us that are alive, we are not rising. We will just be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and still remain where we are in the spirit. Now, the next scripture he quoted is Matthew 13, 24 to 27. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Physical, physical sun and moon. The stars will fall from heaven and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Physical sky. At that time, people will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth. He's talking about the resurrection of the day. That is what we call the parousia of Christ. That's what we call the manifestation of of the sons of God. All of us will manifest our full potential because mortality will be swallowed up of immortality. That's all he's talking about there. He's not talking about changing a location to somewhere. The next scripture he said is Matthew 24, 30 to 31. Then will appear the sign of the son of man in heaven, in the immaterial, not in the sky. And then all the people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. The clouds mean he's coming with all of us. All of us that are righteous. All of us. We are the cloud. Cloud means people. A cloud of witnesses. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. The trumpet is not palm. It's a metaphor for the quickening of the spirit. And they will gather his elects from the four winds. One end of the heaven to the other. Meaning the whole world. The heaven used here is a physical atmospheric heaven. Not the immaterial reality that Christ gave in his resurrection. The next scripture here he gave for clarity is Philippians 3.20-21. 20 but our citizenship is in heaven. So right now we are citizens. We are residents of heaven. That's exactly what I'm teaching. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. That savior we are awaiting is the resurrection from the dead, which will be our full manifestation in Christ without mortality. Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform, you see it, our lowly bodies so that we will be like his glorious body. So that's what he's talking about. The same thing I'm teaching is the same thing those scriptures corroborate. None of those scriptures differs from what I have been explaining. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. The heresies of Dr. Damina. The heresies of Dr. Damina. First of all, before I, I, I hit one of those or two or three of those heresies, I want to thank those of you that have, been, have taken it on yourselves. To partner with me in the advancement of the gospel of Christ. We are reintroducing Jesus to this generation. Equipping the believers 
to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. And I want to thank all of you that attack me, but as you are attacking, you are sharing my messages, you are partners with me in advancing the gospel of Christ. I want to thank those of you who are always making it a point of duty to insult and abuse me. I thank you for your partnership. One thing is sure, the truth can never be hindered. The word of God is growing mightily and prevailing all over the nations of the earth. If you observe, they have gone very quiet on tight and the transactional God because the whole world is beginning to see that God cannot be a give me, I bless you God. He's a loving father. Glory to God. You know, many of them don't care about sound doctrine. It's their money they are fighting for, not sound doctrine at all. And some of them, you know, just said, well, you know, Dr. Damina is antichrist. Dr. Damina is antichrist. Well, let's find out what is antichrist. Let's even see if Dr. Damina is antichrist. First John chapter 2 verse 18. Put it up. First John chapter 2 verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. As you have heard that antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. Now give me verse 22 and 23. Let's see who this antichrist. Because there are many and they are all over the earth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist. That denied the father and the son. Now you can't call Dr. Damina antichrist. Because all I preach all the time is the father and the son. I preach the doctrine of Christ. His death, his burial and his resurrection. That in no way defines me as an antichrist. Antichrist is a man that denies that Jesus came in the flesh. And denies that Jesus is God. Look at verse 23 of that first John. Verse 23. Whosoever denied the son. The same had not the father. But he that acknowledged the son. Had the father also. So I'm not antichrist. Now also here that some people malign me. They said that I said. That Jesus is not the father. But that is the truth. Jesus is not the father. I didn't say Jesus is not God. I said Jesus is not the Father. And I took hours to teach. Jesus is God. The Father is God. The Holy Ghost is God. Three of them, one God, in three different personalities and function. That's why John will say he does not have the Father and the Son. Now look at John chapter 14 verse number 10. John chapter 14 verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So Jesus says, there is a father that dwelleth in me. He didn't say I'm the father. But of course, the father and the son cannot be separated. The father is in the son. The son is in the father. That's what we call the doctrine of Christ. That's what we call the... Look at 2 John chapter 1 verse 9. 2 John chapter 1 verse number 9. Whosoever transgresseth, and abided not in the doctrine of Christ, had not God. He that abided, that is if your teaching is not Christ-centered, you don't have God. If the messages a preacher is preaching are not centered on, on, on Christ, he doesn't have God, okay? Had not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the father and the son. So there's a father and there's a son. But both of them are one God. So those calling me antichrist are victims of ignorance. And victims of mischief. Because in no way am I an antichrist. You know Peter said in 2 Peter 2. 2 as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. 
Now, I'm going to make some candid recommendations for those who follow my teachings, for those that are still new, and for those that are learning. And I want you guys to help me spread the news because a lot of people are being misled by mischief makers. They said, Dr. Damina said, God is not in heaven. That's a lie. I never said so. And if you want to get the full import of what I said when I was talking about heaven, God is not in heaven. I was talking about the physical heavenly skies. But I then further thought that God is in the spirit reality called heaven. I have a full teaching on it. And for those that are following, if you want to get full explanation, it's the series in Christ realities, season three. It's on YouTube for free. And there's an ongoing series I'm doing now, living and enjoying the best of two worlds. It will sort you out with God is not in heaven. Then some people take my teachings out of context. And this is to help people that are new to my teachings. They say, Dr. Damina says, no hell fire. Well, I never said no hell fire. But I said there is no fire in hell. Because there are four different hells the Bible teaches. So in order for you to get the full explanation, and this is for those that are sincere, humble, and willing to learn and grow in the knowledge of Christ. It's a series on YouTube called Soteria Season 5. And it's over 30 hours of teaching. Then number three, some people say, well, you know, heresies of Dr. Damina. Dr. Damina said, God does not give children. Then they quote a scripture in Psalm where he says, children are heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Well, that scripture in Psalm is simply saying, God has set the system in place for human beings to procreate. And what we taught there is that heaven is not a nursery with babies all over, crying with feeding bottles and God is struggling to feed them. And if somebody is in need of a baby, God will say, you, you cry too much. Go down. No, God doesn't distribute babies. But God has put in man the ability to procreate. And so man determines the procreation. And that's why we say, what about babies that are born deformed and blind? Is it God that brought them out like that? No, it is because as it is with all human beings, humans are imperfect so sometimes what humans are involved with can come out imperfect okay so but if you want to get the full teaching on that i did a full teaching on why things happen the way they happen season one and two and it's free on youtube on our channel we are so grateful for having you here on our platform kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here and also like this message for us do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from thank you message community